Uh, first I'd like to apologise for not having posted a video for some weeks now. I've uh, been quite busy doing things, so just haven't had a chance to actually sit down and make a video. Um, and meanwhile, I've suddenly got over 300 followers on YouTube, so thank you very much to all of you subscribing on there and for giving me the thumbs up and enjoying watching some of the tutorials that I've been making. Um, today I thought I would do quite a simple technique for making some backgrounds um, for some postcards. Um, I have here, these are postcards that are watercolour paper, they've got a, quite a nice texture, um, all the details on the back there for sending in the post. I bought these from Flying Tiger, um, it's a shop that is all around Europe as far as I'm aware and we're lucky enough to have one fairly close by now, um, up until recently we used to have to travel quite a way. Um, great for stationery and little craft items, bits of homewares, um, so a little bit of a plug for Flying Tiger stores there. I know that other companies do make postcards for watercolour. Um, if not, just you know, a bit of watercolour card cut to 6x4, a bit of mixed media paper, whatever you might happen to have to hand. Um, but today's technique, I'm going to do some sort of watercolour effects using embossing folders and using some distress inks. You can use any dye-based ink for this. I'm using distress inks, that's what I've got. Have a go with what you've got at home and see if it works. So first of all, uh, your embossing folders, obviously when you open them up you have an area that's raised up, um, a side that's raised there or a side that's debossed there. We're going to use the one where the design is raised up. I'm going to apply some ink um, directly from the pad to the embossing folder and you should see that it's Obviously, as long as you're fairly light as you're doing it, it will just be on the areas that are raised up as opposed to all the other bits. Don't have to be too particular. And I've used Twisted Citron and uh, Mermaid Lagoon there. Then I'm going to take a little bit of water and just spritz it. Helps spread the ink a little bit. Take your postcard. And press it down. And there you can see we've got a nice watercolour effect with the leaves on. And we'll set that aside to dry. Just take a bit of the uh, kitchen roll, wipe the ink off your embossing folder. You don't want to put that away with the ink on and then ruin a piece of card the next time you come to make something. We'll try again uh, with a different design, see what we get. This one quite like a pebbles design. And this time we'll choose picked raspberry. I love this colour, nice vibrant pink. And wilted violet. Just sort of dab it all over the folder. water and once again place your cardstock over the folder and press down. It's a really nice effect. I mean if you want, obviously these folders, the embossed design is slightly smaller than the size of my card. So I could go over and just add a bit extra there and a bit there if I wanted it to reach the edges more, but I'm not too bothered. It's just the first layer of a background for a project that's going to have some stamping on afterwards. Once again, let's just wipe the excess ink off. And we'll take another design, this one. This one's got a script handwriting. This might be quite nice and we'll uh, let's try something more neutral vintage photo and what should we put with that um, oh decisions decisions let's have 
Oh dear me, too many to choose from, that's the trouble. I've had fossilised amber. Quick spritz of water once again. And this time, I want the writing to be uh, horizontal on my cord. How beautiful is that? That's really nice. We'll just apply a little bit more ink. side there. Really nice watercolour effect that you're getting. And finally I have this design. It's kind of a Moroccan screen. Um, and you see this is this is the side really it's giving the detail. I'm gonna I'm gonna try for the, the negative side this time. And we're gonna go with festive berries. And let's go aged mahogany. Nice rich colours here. of water carefully place the card down look at that let's just add a little extra on the, that edge and this edge Another great layer to start off a stamping project. Just clean that off. You can always rinse these embossing folders under the tap to wash the ink off if you think there's any left. As I say, you don't want to risk leaving ink on there and then coming to emboss a piece of white card and ruining it. So here we have our Four background designs that we've done. And we just need to let them dry. Speed it up with a heat tool if you need to. We'll just go and make a cup of tea, have a biscuit, and then we'll come back and we'll do some stamping. Right, now that my postcards are all dry, um, I think it's pretty much dry on there. I'm going to decorate them with some stamping. Some I'm going to stamp directly onto the postcard. and But this first one here, because this is quite an all-over heavy pattern in the background, I'm going to stamp onto some white card cut out and mount on there. Um, I'm using a little girl stamp, which is the Stampers Anonymous one, Tim Holtz one, we're using that one. And the sentiment that I'm going to be putting with it is from Impression Obsession um, from this set with lots of different sentiments on. I can always put the links to those in the description down below. Um, I'm going to be using Archiver Link, my favourite blacking. I love this one. Um, it is waterproof. It's a good solid black. And it just seems to do the job. No matter what brand of stamp, whether I'm using rubber stamps, acrylic stamps, polymer stamps, I always seem to get a good impression with it. And it is my favourite one. So I've always got um, a re to hand as well, because I'd hate for this one to run out on me. So we're going to stamp these um, this image and then the sentiment. Just This is just onto some offcuts of white card out of my box. Love the detail in this. So we're going to cut that out in a second. Um, let's just ink up the sentiment. And that 
that's that stamped as well. Let me get my scissors and cut around this. Now we're going to have to cut her legs off a little bit. Um, she's going to be too tall. So I want my postcard to be landscape. But we'll cut around her first and then position her and decide where is best to place her. There's that sentiment trimmed up nicely. So, we've just got to decide on the placement. Um, so I'm going to put her on this side here. I think the sentiment over there. So we'll get a bit of glue, just using a Kalal All Purpose. I like this one. It dries quickly. It doesn't crinkle the card up. You could use some double-sided tape. With postcards, you want it to be secure. It's going to go through the post, preferably not in an envelope. That's the whole point of the postcard. And so, uh, you know, a good glue is better than some tape. I think the tape you end up with too many bits that could be caught in the post and, and lifted off. Just press that down. feet off the bottom there. I'm just going to take uh, some black soot distress ink just to add a bit of definition around the edge of my sentiment before I glue it on. and try not to smudge it and I think we'll finish the whole thing off with a bit of distress ink around the edge just for definition There's our first postcard finished. A little bit of art to mail to a friend. For our second postcard, um, we're going to be stamping directly onto the postcard itself. And because it's got a slightly textured surface, I'm using my stamp press. Now, there's lots of these tools on the market, lots of different brands, different prices. I find it useful. For textured surfaces and for solid stamps where I need to get a good impression and I'm not confident I'll get it first time you can just do this with an acrylic block if you have one don't worry about it um, but I'm just hoping that I'll get a slightly better finish by using this stamp tool I'm going to be using some stamps um, from Lavinia stamps to create a little scene so I'm going to start off with the, these lovely sort of ink cap mushrooms, toadstools, and I'm going to decide where I want to place them on the scene. That's the great thing about this tool, it's before I ink it off, 
I can position the stamps. So I think I want to have a couple of them there. So when I'm happy with that, press them onto the lid there and I can ink up. Once again, I'm using archival ink. Don't need to ink it all the way to the end because obviously that's the level that my card is. And as you see the texture of the paper, I haven't got a completely solid image there. So that's the great thing about this. Obviously making sure that my cards still lined up with the edge. I can re-ink it back up again and go over exactly the same place and hopefully this time get a much better clearer solid image on this textured card. It is a really good tool and if you can find one within your price range it would be a good investment to anyone who does quite a bit of stamping. So I'm now going to just take those off and I think on the other side, I want this toad stool, I like this one, it's got a little bit more detail in it. Now if you need to move the magnets which are holding the card in place, do that. Um, keeping my card lined up against this edge so that I know if it, sometimes it moves when you lift the stamp off as the ink sticks to the card a little bit occasionally. And I think that's stamped well, but we'll just give it another go because it's a bit more detailed. There, that's brilliant. And finally, um, for those of you familiar with Lavinia stamps, no scene would be complete without some fairies. And so I have this set of two little flying fairies. You can just see the on the cellophane. And we're going to place one there and one there. the archival ink once again and stamp and I think I'm happy with that with one I don't need to do that again and there we have a little scene I think I might just finish off with a bit of glitter on there um, Move this out of the way. And then we'll take a bit of stickles, always good for some sparkle. And we'll have the fairies with a trail of glitter between them. Which, when that's dried, we'll see that a lot better. And I think we'll just add a little shading to the toadstool on the left. With the marker. I think this will just sort of bring out a, the edge of it a little more. is one of the Nouveau markers from Tonic and the grey is 487 if anybody has one and was wondering very much like Pro markers, Copics um, but there I think that just 
helps bring out the detail with the spots. That'll be nice with a little bit of sparkle in the middle. Might doodle a border on that one actually. I like things to have a definite edge. I don't know why. I just feel that they uh, look a bit more finished off. So let's just use a fine liner pen. I just feel that finishes that off a little bit better with the border. So that's our second postcard finished. Right, we're going to do our third postcard, which is the one with the spray of leaves on it. And I'm going to be using these Dare to be Artsy clear stamps, so totally Tracy design with text in the background, which I quite like. And I want to keep the petals and the leaves white, so we're going to stamp onto a scrap of card, cut it out and put it onto the background. Um, I also want my tulip to be taller than that. So I'm going to stamp the leaves first and then use a pen to extend the stem before stamping the flower on the top. So I'm just going to take a black fine liner and continue this stem just to make it a bit taller. Don't be afraid of uh, making adjustments to the stamps that you've got to fit your project. So now we're going to stamp the, the tulip on the top. That's better. It's a much better size for the card. And we'll cut it out. Once again, I'm going to leave a little white border around it. I just find that easier. And we'll glue that one into place. Now I think this needs a sentiment of some description too. And let's have a little look what we've got. Okay, so we're going to use one of the sentiments from the Own It set from Visible Image. These are designed to go with a face, but they're really, really useful for all sorts of cards. So I've chosen the bold and beautiful one. I like the handwriting script. It's a nice contrast to the typing that's in the back of the flower and leaf design. We're just going to stamp that directly on there. Could have used the stamp press for this, but I think we should be all right with this sentiment. There we go. I think that's quite a nice, uh, simple postcard there. Maybe we'll just edge that again like we did before. Um, let's edge it with the Mermaid Lagoon ink, because that's what we used actually in the design. coordinate quite nicely. And you could add some colour to the flower if you wanted to. I think it's nice just to leave these fairly simple and um, it's entirely up to you. So that's number three done. 
So here we are with the fourth and final one, which is the one with the text on it. Um, I'm going to be using one of the visible image new release um, time sets of stamps. I love this one, this image with this guy. I've already lined up where I want him to be on my postcard. And because I've used the sepia um, vintage photo colours, I'm going to use um, sepia archival ink rather than black. I think black's a bit harsh for this one. But once again, I'm using the stamp press because I'm stamping directly onto this textured cardstock. And this is quite a large silhouette stamp. Not the easiest of things to get a perfect image with on a textured card. Everything's really against you. You know, the stamps, you can stamp perfectly on a smooth card, no problem whatsoever with these stamps, but uh, I've got quite a texture on this and I want to be sure of getting a solid image. So as you can see there, the first one has picked up the texture of the card. So we'll just do it again. This might require two or three uh, inkings of the stamp to get a good stamped image. But these tools really do make that easier. there we may not get a perfectly uh, solid image there's quite a lot of texture here but we'll try for the third time and see where we are you can always fill in any gaps with a fine line of pen or marker if you've got something the same color i don't think i'm going to get a better image than that to be perfectly honest and i'm quite happy with that um let's just take a Pen here and as you see if you want to you can fill in some of that and get a slightly more solid image but to be fair I think that's quite nice it's a slightly vintage effect and I'm going to put some ink around the edge I think that will look great when it's finished need some sort of words I think to go with this um, the other stamp set that came out at the same time has some really good sentiments to do with time and um, so I think we'll use a couple of those it's really nice how you can uh, mix and match these things go for we always think we have time and sticking with the sepia ink because I think that's a nice uh, tone to use with this background I'll just give it one more but that's pretty good I'll just move that out of the way. I think all this needs is a bit of distressing around the edge. Foam applicator tool and hit the vintage photo ink again. And we'll just bring the colour in. And then we'll just go in with the black as well. have that as you see if you want a more solid effect on a textured card go in with a pen and just touch in those areas but I quite like that you can see that that's the texture nice vintage effect and that's all our four postcards let me just clean this mess up and uh, and here we have our full finished postcards 
Um, it's a really nice technique using those embossing folders, just another way of creating a background, maybe using something you haven't used for a while. I rarely use my embossing folders to emboss card, so nice to use them with the inks and just create some designs. I hope you've been inspired. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. And as always, leave a comment if you've got something to say. I love to hear your thoughts. And if you've uh, created something like this yourself, please let me know. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you.